Hello everyone. Let's talk about how we see color. Eyes are a bit like cameras. They both have an aperture, a lens, and a shutter. Well, kind of. And of course, a sensor. Zooming into a camera sensor reveals a mosaic of red, blue, and green elements that capture different wavelengths of light. The very center of your retina contains densely packed photoreceptors. It looks like this. It's called your fovea. It's a bit like the camera sensor, but less regular. I notice that there are not as many blue dots on the left. You don't see blue in the very center of your visual field. But this is just a tiny part of your retina. Let's zoom out. This is the world's first rendering of the complete retinal mosaic. I've included all 100 million photoreceptors. As we move away from the fovea, there are fewer cones. Let's zoom out to see the entire retina. This is a 20 gigapixel image. It's hard to see details at this resolution, so let's switch to a lower res schematic. While the fovea is just a degree or two, your eye has a field of view of 160 degrees. That's incredibly wide. And there's a lot going on here. You have a pretty large blind spot to make room for the optic nerve that carries information to your brain. We basically have two visual systems, one that operates during the day and another at night. Why do we need both? Well, our early ancestors spent half of their waking hours in the dark. To see in low light, humans evolved photoreceptors so sensitive that they can measure individual photons. These amazing sensors are called rods, but they only see in shades of gray, so you don't see much color in low light. We have nearly 100 million rods, which is kind of overkill as there's not much to see at night. So our visual system pools the responses of many rods together. This is like having a camera with big fat pixels. In reality, the pattern is more like this, with lower density in the periphery. And when we look through our rod camera, we see an image like this. You'll notice there's a hole in the very center. This is your fovea, which has no rods, only cones, which shut down at night. There's also a hole in your blind spot, but your brain fills it in with something plausible. All right, so that's how we see in the dark, using rods. The rest of the time, we rely on our cones. Cones are cool because they let us see in color, but we don't have that many, and they are concentrated in the fovea. So when you look at this image, what you're actually seeing looks more like this. You have to move your eye around to scan in the scene. These movements are called saccades, and you do a few per second. Your brain then fuses these details into a composite image. You don't see this composite directly, it's created by your brain. Our cones capture color, but what exactly is color? The light we see is made up of wavelengths from about 400 to 700 nanometers, which we perceive as a rainbow of colors. But what is the mechanism that produces color? Each cone is sensitive to a range of wavelengths. The S cone picks up violets and blues. M responds mostly to greens and yellows. And L extends into the red part of the spectrum. When light of a particular wavelength comes in, it produces a response in each of the cones. Our brain then translates these responses into a color, light blue in this case and associates it with this wavelength. Every wavelength maps to three unique cone responses. So we're pretty good at distinguishing the colors of the rainbow. But some colors are not in the rainbow. What are all the colors that humans can see? This chart shows the full range of colors, or more precisely, chromaticities, visible to most people. On the rim are the rainbow colors. The interior is made up of the rest of the colors, like pink and white. How are these colors created? Let's start with white. You probably learned that white contains all the colors of the rainbow. This is a uniform spectrum of wavelengths. It will cause a very specific cone response that our brain perceives as white. But there are other ways to produce that same cone response. For example, this spectrum produces the same exact response in all three cones, as does this spectrum, and all of these. We perceive all of these spectra as the exact same shade of white. 
two spectra that appear identical to us are called metamers. So while we're good at discriminating individual wavelengths, we're pretty lousy at telling apart more complex spectra. But there's more to color than what meets the eye. This is a printout of the color chart I just showed you outside on a sunny day. Here's the same chart indoors under incandescent light. They appear more or less the same. But the light reflected off the paper is totally different indoors versus outdoors. What appears as white indoors is actually orange. This is the spectrum of an incandescent light bulb. It's mostly red, yellow, and orange. And that's what you're seeing reflected off the paper indoors. Outdoors, the spectrum is dominated by blue, so the paper should appear light blue. Yet the paper looks white both indoors and out, and the colors on the page look similar. That's because our brain estimates the illumination and compensates for it, effectively removing orange when we're indoors and removing blue outdoors. This property is called color constancy. Things look similar to us when the light changes. And it's really useful. Wouldn't it be weird if your clothes were changing colors all the time? Well, occasionally this does happen. Most people see the dress on the left as blue-black and the one on the right as white-gold. Trust me, they're exactly the same. Your brain is guessing the illumination and compensating, just like for the white paper. This point on the sleeve has an RGB value that's slightly more blue than green or red. Your brain infers that the light is yellow, so it pushes down the red and green channels, emphasizing the blue. And when the light looks blue, your brain pushes down the blue channel, so the sleeve looks white. Apples and oranges. You can't get much more different, as the old saying goes. But if you're colorblind, they look surprisingly similar. Some folks lack an M cone, others lack an L cone, and to them, the rainbow looks like this. Did you know that cameras can also be colorblind? The earliest films were only sensitive to short wavelengths, blue and ultraviolet. Those wavelengths exaggerate wrinkles and freckles. So Lincoln probably didn't look this wrinkled in real life. We can now use AI to restore the missing wavelengths and better predict how he actually appeared. I hope you've enjoyed this video on color perception.